Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's BISC Brief call. We're going to try to restart this series uh, bi-weekly. This week's topic is the improving the support workflow for BISC. Uh, I think lately things have gotten a little bit scattered across the various channels that we, uh, that, that we have a presence, Slack, Keybase, Twitter, the forum, Telegram, uh, all, the, all the places that BISC people are questions have come in and some get answered, some don't get answered, some that do get answered may not be answered as well as they could be. And uh, overall, it's just not a good outcome. And we want to make sure that people are getting the best advice that they can get. And so this call is about refining that workflow, perhaps designating people and processes and tools to make that process smoother and uh, just better for everybody involved. So we have a rough agenda in the GitHub issue. And let me get that one second. I'll put that in the chat for those who are on the call. So there's a bit of a discussion there on just preliminary ideas and preliminary research on the tools out there and the goals that we have to, uh, to implement them. Uh, but this call is to discuss those and also to, to solicit feedback and additional perspectives from those of you who've joined on the call. Uh, I see some names I don't recognize, so um, I'm glad to see a number of you guys join. Thanks for joining. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me get the, there's one slide for this talk just as a guide, a visual guide to keep us on, on topic. Let me get that online. Share screen. Let me know if you don't see that. You should see an improving support workflow. I can see it, yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Not, not, not full screen, but enough, yeah. Okay. Uh, should be full screen. Oh, I see what you mean. Maybe is that a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is the basic agenda we have. We want to talk about where we are right now, what the current state of support is, and then goals. What do we actually want to achieve with this? What are the limitations in achieving our goals? Privacy and security, of course, are a big, big considerations. Um, and then once we establish a good foundation of goals, then to discuss tools and practical ways to achieve these goals. It looks like a couple of people are having issues with audio. Uh, I think Christoph and I can talk to each other. I'm not sure what else. Audio works fine for me too. Okay, all right. Maybe it's just issues on, I think on, on your guys' end. Too. And then, um, yeah, if we can get this far, then the last step would be talking about implementation and how to actually get this, uh, this plan, if whatever we come up with in, in motion. So as far as the, the current state of support, that's, I guess I went over that a little bit. It's a bit scattered and that's kind of the main issue. We have lots of channels, um, no, no designated people to provide support, um, no, training basis, so to speak. Uh, people just kind of come in, they maybe read some, read through the forum a little bit, read through past issues, and then kind of start answering people as, 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 they, as they can. Um, usually that's okay, but I, I've seen some instances where people may not be giving the most accurate responses, uh, so not, not a good outcome. Uh, sometimes people are not answered at all. Sometimes people wait longer than they should, than they should have to for a response. Uh, just in general, the results are lower or slower trade completion, probably dissatisfaction for users. And in the worst case is a loss of confidence for issues that were not resolved or resolved in a suboptimal way. So um, that's at a high level what I see as the main issues. Anybody else want to add anything? So I guess these issues would be mainly. Yeah, I'd like to say that we, 
we also have a problem of not being able to, even though there is a solution for some problems, we have no way to find it. So if somebody yeah. had the same problem in a different country, like we just have absolutely no way to, to find that unless we go digging and, and trying to find some, some GitHub issue from way back or something that might be closed even. So that's another bummer. Yeah, that's a good point. Like a, a repository or a knowledge base of sorts where previous issues and common issues can be collected for people to, to refer to later, certainly. Yeah, but uh, what about the channels that we, we do have today? Like, I know that we have a Telegram, like the, the English-speaking one. Mm -hmm. I am sort of running a, a Brazilian-Portuguese Brazilian one, but it's more for low-touch stuff, like onboarding people. We have Slack, which we're slowly migrating out of. We have the forum. We have Keybase. What else? We have email as well, or no? No, no email. There is Twitter. That's uh, lots of support comes through there. Providing support on Twitter is quite difficult, no? Yeah, it's not easy, but it's it's just uh, natural for a lot of people to reach out on there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's. So it would be these five, right? Yeah, I mean, every so often people from IRC pop in, but IRC. Okay. Yeah. So it's a number of channels, and I think. Um, one of the things that I, that I think we mentioned in the, in the thread was that these channels are probably only going to grow over time. And I think, I mean, we'll probably get into this later, but whatever, whatever we end up deciding on, whatever approach we decide on, we'll have to somehow take into account this phenomenon or this dynamic of people reaching out in a number of different unpredictable ways that are going to change over time. Uh, also, I think yeah. one important thing would be to discuss the, what's the scope. So, for example, uh, many low-touch solutions, like helping somebody that has a bug or not even a bug, but like just a configuration issue or like it's not working, or whatever, that you just walk them through it and it works. It's different from, for example, what we had in, in the, the latest launch where we, we had people who had problems with the trades having to reach out to the arbitrators and to the arbitrators in order to have, I don't know, transactions signed manually and things like that. Mm -hmm. How, like, is that even what we should be expecting of a support group or is that, is that a completely out of the ordinary case because of the big update? I like mean, as far as reaching out manually? Support. Yeah, like, is that something that we would want to support moving forward? Or how, do we, how would we want to support something that requires such a, a deep level of, uh, how can I put this? Like a mediator you know, or an arbitrator. It's not a low-touch solution. It is yeah. a high-touch that you need to walk somebody through and... Like I remember I, I brought in some five different people into, into Keybase so they could reach out to the mediators and stuff like that. Like, is that something that we want to be supporting moving forward? Like, should we maybe, maybe, I don't know, write a blog post about it. Like, what is the attitude towards something like that? I think that's something that we should think about. I would say, I mean, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what, what I wanted to point out is that the problem that people are not reaching mediators or arbitrators, uh, that's just a bug. That's, that's the problem. So that's something that shouldn't happen. So we, we do just have to fix that, that uh, the, the message uh, sending gets more reliable. It, it won't be perfect, probably, if, um, but uh, it should be close to perfect. So so that if you want to reach a medi um, mediator or your arbitrator, that you can do this uh, from within the app without any problems. Still, yeah, there, there must be some other way to, to contact uh, mediators if, you, if you're just not able to do so through the app. And yeah, for that, we, we have to have a, a, a different channel, at least one different channel, I guess. So that's... It's just uh, yeah, my, my point of view sure. regarding that. I agree. 
Yeah, but, yeah. but what, what we all agreed that it was a, a bug in the process. And yeah, and and cases. also um, because of this this update from from the old trade protocol to the new trade protocol, um, we we had so many uh, additional arbitration cases because people were also not following our guides. So we had so there's lots of manual um, fixing of of existing trades. So and that that just accumulated and just um, yeah escalated the problems uh, we had on the, on the support part so it it's maybe it was a good good that this happened because now we have um, we have more urge uh, to to figure this pro properly for for the future um, when uh, for the case that this grows uh, more and more and, and quicker uh, yeah but the, the aim the aim must be that there are nearly no um, technical support requests because of bugs in the client um, and yeah how we want to deal with kind of low-key uh, support um, which is probably usability problems or is that what you mean Fabio with low-key support that people just need to have a easier guide yeah so like it's not it's not really a bug in the in the software is just guiding how to use it or explaining something that you didn't understand you know it's basic question that you you can probably answer in one like two lines of of answer you you're good and the person is, is good to go instead of oh i have a bug i need to see your logs like okay I try to read your logs. I didn't understand what happened, so I posted on support and asked for help from from somebody who understands more about the log. Like, I think these are the two extremes. Now, to me, that seems like a knowledge-based thing. Like over time, we'll accumulate through experience uh, what the most common queries like that are, and and put them in one place, and then at the most refer people. Yeah, if to we them. have something like that, that would yeah. be really really nice because the the GitHub issues. I think they work pretty well for the workflow of fixing bugs, but not so much for the for yeah. And you can't content, expect this. You, know? you, you can't expect a, a, a standard regular user to go through those issues and decipher everything exactly. and find their solution. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's say True. in general, also at least in my opinion, a low key support uh, shouldn't shouldn't be an um, an aim. Uh, to, to do because yeah it 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 hardly scales if we get the, the, yeah, the thousands should, of, of users yeah we have to just fix usability of of the client and try to to improve mm -hmm. that over and over to to have as as little support requests as possible as as everyone knows uh, this mm -hmm. wouldn't scale proper, properly and yeah it it's it's not worth to to spend so much uh, res money and resources for support that um, actually needs yeah. to be spent for fixing. I totally agree. Like, we're, after all, we're not a, a high value. How how can you say that? A high touch service. You know, it's not like there is an account manager if you're a big trader or anything like that. Like, absolutely, like it should, we should be aim for something scalable. Shall we move on to how we we aspire to have? The support and yeah, the, let's and do it. Let's talk about goals. With the next topic. Cool. So, uh, I think Christoph, could you share with us what are the known constraints that you you see from within the app? Because I imagine there are there are a few channels of support, right? So one is you have a problem and you try to solve it within the app. The other is you have a problem, you have no idea what the hell happened, and you go search for stuff and you end up in the website and finding something there from within the app. Yeah. Let, let's say yeah, best, best, be, best case um, solution would to have, have the support within the app to have kind of knowledge base access with, from within the app, um, how you are probably used uh, on, on mobile apps where, where it's quite common. But that's also because there is there are really good support um, um, systems available. They provide normally a good SDK, which you just plug in, and then you have everything you want from a ticketing system. It um, just suggests um, possible uh, articles which could so solve uh, your problem. Um, 
to do this. Um, but yeah, that's for mobile apps. That's for apps uh, which uh, yeah do have identity, and it, it's harder for us to do this properly, uh, and also in a in a private private and secure way. Um, I think Wiz uh, has some experience how they did it in uh, one of his former companies. Um, uh, in combination with a, a regular support system, I think it was Sendesk. Um, with do you yeah, want to? Um, basically what we did was we integrated with the Zendesk APIs, um, and there's there's some cool things you can do to even when using like a fully hosted solution like Zendesk, you can um, add some encryption or other. Um, layers of uh, to protect the user's privacy and the mess the contents of their messages, while still maintaining all the features and functionality of Zendesk. So, the way it worked is we just had a web page, um, so we didn't use the Zendesk web pages except for like the public articles, content, and things. But um, you could you could just p uh, basically like PGP encrypt to some public key, and then it would create a ticket with this encrypted blob of data. And for the agents, when they view the tickets, they would have like a browser extension and they would have their uh, private key loaded in the browser extension that could just um, view that uh, encrypted blob. And so that way we could get the best of both worlds, right? But does that also mean that all support agents have access to the same key? Or do they have a specific key for that particular ticket? like? Once they were assigned that ticket, they get the key and then they can decrypt it. How was it? Yeah, I mean, you, you can implement some kind of a uh, fancy um, key rotation system. You could do, you know, public key infrastructure. You could do certificates. There's all kinds of uh, cool stuff you could do, uh, depending on how complex you want to make it. Um, I think in practice, you probably just need to, like, maybe rotate the keys once a month or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the usually the web forms end up in email support because imagine the person reply uh, sends the form and then what do you reply to? I mean, in which channel? Yes. So, so what what's what's probably possible um, from within the app? Uh, I haven't implemented that. As I just had a quick look at the relay service, uh, which we uh, use for sending out push notifications. Um, mm -hmm. And that's 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 using uh, regular APIs uh, from um, Google and from Apple to send out the mobile notifications and sends encrypted messages from the clients. And the clients connect through Tor um, to an online address um, to the relay service, uh, passing on um, the encrypted message, uh, which is then just forwarded to the push notification. Uh, so that's but something that only in the mobile apps, no? And what about the desktop, the client? No, no, it, it, um, the, 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 the messages are triggered from the desktop app. Ah, okay. So, desktop uh -huh. app. Yeah, just like um, the notification sends... for trades. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, exactly so, Fabio, that. like, um, to be clear, we're not going to be using the email functionality of Zendesk at all. The only yeah, way you would be able absolutely. to interact with the support backend is from the BISC desktop app directly. And it would be totally invisible okay. to the user because the desktop app would just be hitting some Tor hidden service onion like API and that would post mm -hmm. it to the Zendesk and it would all be end to end encrypted or something like this. Cool. And uh, do you think that works straight with the API? So like from Zendesk, imagine that I'm a support agent. We get a ticket. I decrypt it there in the, in the Zendesk UI. I reply to it and then it goes directly or do I reply somewhere else? No, you, you would have to, um, I mean, we could even make like a BISC desktop app like support interface that decrypts the messages too. It, it depends on how like um, yeah, because nice we want to. What I mean is like Zendesk and, and these tools, they also have a lot of uh, widgets and, and tiny things that are useful in the sense that you can categorize the tickets and have like known solutions, canned responses and things like that. So if the support okay, so people could use maybe the, maybe it's better to like um, imagine it that we're not even using Zendesk. We're just using like a, mm -hmm. um, a like a dumb database where you can tag the messages, but you can also assign the messages. 
Um, and we were also looking at this self-hosted solution called Kyoko. And uh, I sent the, the pricing to uh, Christoph. I think it was like a few hundred dollars a month. It wasn't like too cost prohibitive. But maybe if we combine the, um, our end-to-end -end encryption stuff with the self-hosted solution, then we could have the mm -hmm. best of uh, all the worlds. I, I mean, Zendesk is, is just too uh, centralized, it's too, you know. Yeah, it is. You can see everything. It, right? it is. The, and, it, it's for, for And more importantly, fun. like, um, w when we use the BISC app, we get all the um, security and privacy from, uh, you know, there's no, no need to authenticate the user because it's going, it's going to be, like, signed with their Tor key or something like this. Whereas... You know, if you just shoot an email to Zendesk, we have no idea who you are. You could just, you know, be a scammer, right? Like, there's, uh, you need to authenticate the user while providing the Basically, exactly what Keybase is doing, right? You get the security and the privacy together. True. Well, I think that's a, a great way to go. Uh, can you write on the chat the name of the, the software you mentioned? The, the open source one? Yeah, it's called Kayoko. Uh, I'll type it on the chat, too. So these are the constraints, right? We, we wanted absolute encryption, communication directly to the, the BISC app, and, well, security, because of the, the encryption. Yeah, and, and it shouldn't Correct. be, That's it. yeah, and, and uh, it should to, um, to open a support ticket immediately. So we, we need somehow to point the user first or make it a little bit harder so that they first read up on, on the knowledge base or in the documentation section um, if, if that could solve their problem before just shooting out um, very low key support requests that can be solved easily just by reading one article or so. Because, yeah, is it easy Otherwise, to submit a, yeah. a type of web view in the app? So, like, as you go to the support tab, you open a web view that we load the knowledge base, which is a web page, and then you search there. Um, we, we can add a, a web view that would increase the size of the client. Uh, um, I think Manfred once tried or added a web view, and there were some issues. I have to have a look. Um, so of course, it must but be possible. Also, like, it doesn't have to be something that, uh, you know, everything in the same place. It can also be you click support, and then there is a big message saying, hey, before you contact support, please check the, the link. And then it goes to the knowledge base, which is a website. Yeah, yeah some, something like yeah. that. So we just have to think about not, so that they would, can't provide real support that how people are probably used on, on other, like on Coinbase. Yeah, or exactly. Like that if I have any problem, I, I will get support immediately uh, that won't scale. So it's more if you really have a, a, a technical problem or something like that and it can't be solved easily by just reading documentation, then we, we, we should be able to provide support for these users. Okay, so where do we stand on constraints? So we talked about security and privacy uh, in communication. End-to-end um, -end encryption would be we great. We talked about the channel itself. So what, what do we want to do with the existing social media channels? Do we want to funnel people into using within the app? Not really. I think the social media channels and all the low-touch thing would just direct to the knowledge base. Yeah, right. regarding the other other channels, um, it it probably is, is better to just as, as you said point people to knowledge base or uh, just random people can can reply because it's it's probably not not so difficult or so um, so problematic um, the problems that are covered there, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess we we do have support within the app, then people don't need to go to the forum. Um, post on Twitter, um, go to Keybase. Yeah, but the thing is, if we, if we keep telling them that support is within the app, then every question they have, it's gonna come from within the app. Yeah, like true. Even very low, like very low touch things, like, oh, you just press the wrong button, or just go to the, the other tab, and there you see your funds. 
Yeah, maybe maybe it, it must be more uh, within the client. There is tech support, and all the other support must be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I think having yeah, the same people who are in dialogue. Mm, sorry, I was going to say I think having the same people, whoever is designated to be in charge of this support infrastructure, whatever it is, should also keep an eye on these other channels. We should just like designate what are the channels we want to focus on and have these people watch these channels for low touch support requests and then mm -hmm. just handle them there. Yeah. And also, um, like I'm envisioning that we, we have a support tab in the app, which we do. And there we just have a big message saying, uh, please go check the knowledge base. And, and I don't know, some, some things, before you are able to actually send the message to, to support, maybe we put some form to try to uh, triage what they're, what they're getting and, and also to actually have just a barrier. So it's not too easy to send a support request for people that are expecting to have uh, Coinbase style support where everything you can just ask and we're going to hold your hand through the whole process. So, uh, can we now agree on what are the functionalities that we need? We have the desktop client. Sorry. Sorry, daughter is yeah. about to go to sleep. Uh, so we have the desktop client. We have the load, the, the social media channels and, and all that and the knowledge base. The, the ticketing system. Do we really need a ticketing system? I wanted to ask oh. if, um, is it, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but is it, is it possible to, I mean, isn't the mediation and arbitration system that we already have kind of a ticketing system anyway? Is it possible to repurpose that for general support? Like it would be kind of crude mm -hmm. probably, but I mean, uh, it seems like a lot of what we would need is already kind of there, at least from the outside looking in. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, actually, um, at, at the moment, um, it's not that sophisticated. So you can't tag or reassign tickets. So it's, it's more like that when the, the, the ticket or support request is opened, uh, an arbitrator or a mediator or a support agent is, is selected and then only this support agent will um, receive the, the messages and he has to kind of solve the problem. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but so it is hard to do something like, uh, imagine that I get assigned a ticket. I don't know how to solve the problem. I need to ask for help from another support agent that might know the, the solution. So that either need a, a private channel where all the support people talk to each other, but then they're sharing the, the information and the, the encryption is as safe as all the support team. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's just an idea. Um, th this is one of the differences between the, the arbitration system and a, a support uh, functionality, right? Because the support, you, you should be able to, to forward it or to get somebody else's opinion, to add comments to it. I think uh, yeah. if and, we were to use a very raw, yes, but some features that are very interesting make it not really suitable. Uh, what speaks against uh, using the same system from my point of view is that yeah, if you have a problem with the existing system, then using the same messaging uh, for, mm. for support might be then another problem and yeah, we may be not able to solve the problem that the user is having. Um, kind of sp splitting it up still, if we still communicate through Tor, uh, we, it's, it's probably quite safe that just a regular uh, communication to another uh, onion address will work compared to 
our messaging system, um, peer-to-peer messaging system. But yeah. Okay. Cool. So I guess we've acknowledged that we have, we're going to have a couple of parts. We're going to have some kind of conventions to handle social channels. We're going to have something with possibly within the software and the program, the BISC itself, uh, some kind of knowledge base, and then also probably some kind of a ticketing system. Are we in agreement? Um, sorry, what, what, what do you mean with ticketing system? Oh, some kind of like a Zendesk type of tool to okay. handle some of the more major uh, support requests. Yes, but that is together with the within the app, no? Well, it'll be integrated. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be in the app, but it'll be. Ah, yeah, actually, like you're 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 correct. So, like the the desktop, the integration within the desktop is one way of creating a support ticket, but not the only way, because I imagine we we would also want to have the the support form in in the website. But like people have a problem even opening the app. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. All right, so uh, should we move on to talking about Let's tools? talk about tools then. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so I guess we, caught, we mentioned a couple, uh, a couple of approaches for the ticketing system. Um, so essentially, we need a tool for knowledge base, a tool for ticketing. Usually they come together, but not necessarily. And communication between agents. I think we, we just create a, a team, a key based team and put the support agents there. And that's a, a very private uh, channel or team. No? Yeah, well, um, that sounds fine to me. I th what I was, uh, this might be jumping forward to implementation, but I, it seems like a a process with moving parts and a lot to accomplish. Um, maybe we could consider starting with one of these items first. So maybe designating people who want to take this on and who, uh, sorry, who, um, designating people who want to take on the, the lower hanging fruit, so to speak, so the social channels. And then once they've gotten those under control, then start building a knowledge base from there. And then I think maybe this process would give us a, a good idea of what we're really dealing with and what we need to, the tools we really need to build the next step of the, the ticket. Uh, but do you think the social channels are out of control? Well, they're not in control. I think there, there's, there's no designated people like you, you have a good handle yes. on the telegram for Brazil, but I think mm -hmm. like the, the forum, I mean, I see questions go un, unanswered there for, for quite a while sometimes. Um, cool. Same on Keybase yeah, occasionally. Um, I never so visited I, I, the forum. What's that? I never visited the forum. Oh, I okay. uh -huh. yeah. I don't go there very much either, but that's, that's part of the problem is that there's no one, I don't think at least we had a couple of people in the past who would regularly frequent that place and answer people but I'm not sure that they're so active anymore. And so I think in my mind, a good first step would be to like, to get people on this actively in all the places we want them to be active on and, um, you know, get them, get them trained, so to speak, or get, get them up to speed on the most important issues of the moment so that they can respond uh, as well as possible. And then, from there, start building a knowledge base and potentially getting a ticketing system ready in parallel. So how I would approach it. Agreed. Yeah, I uh, also think- What are the channels we need to put in control then? A forum, Slack, Keybase is kind of where everybody actually does hang out. So I don't think we need extra control there. Yeah, I think we should probably discuss uh, Shutting down, or Offline. I don't know, moving away from Slack entirely, so that we can mm -hmm. maybe get rid of a channel. But that's probably another conversation. Discord. There is a Discord. 
No, I, I, don't, I think the guy was... Yeah, no, somebody suggestion. posted here on chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Christoph, you were going to say something? Yeah, no. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to say it's pretty the same. Also, I think uh, we need to, to, to speed up the time, uh, how long it takes to, to, to answer support requests, because that mm -hmm. takes out the, the pressure a lot. Um, for, from the from the people having problems, if that they know, okay, yep. someone uh, is there to to help me, uh, and then the quality of the um, of the support um, response, and I think for for that having uh, a knowledge base is the next, so that support uh, um, agents yeah, are, exactly so support can just, builds capital instead of just you know, runs around headless chicken. Yeah, so, so support agents can just uh, copy paste um, uh, well thought, uh, well um, formulated um, guidance for, for, for the most common problems and just post it there. And yeah, and that, that should be a, a big, big first step already. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and, 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 and as you said, Steve, as we will see then, uh, most of the tools, they, they do have some some social media integrations. Twitter is quite quite common. So, um, so what agents can can test test this out. We can test the systems. We already provide value with the knowledge base. And I don't know if how hard it is to to uh, directly feed in the the forum as well. We can Stuff look into that. The, to uh, around. What's it called? The uh, discourse is a pretty pretty common forum. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see integrations there. Yeah, and, and, and the, last, the last step, because it's the most, most um, not complicated, but it's, it's, yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it's the most complicated and it will be some, some development effort to integrate uh, and then support within the app and, and then just uh, forward it to our support system. I would also see that that as a last step, because yeah, we can do all, all the other stuff uh, quite easily and quite independent from the client release cycle. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. So, if we're in agreement about that, do we want to talk about implementation and how we want to get how to get this this ball rolling with designating people for this? new then you decide which tool we're going for like which ticketing system how how do we make the knowledge base do we have open source solutions for that so i was thinking that we would uh we would discuss that once we've gotten past this first step of designating people and getting started with the social channels and uh knowledge okay. like it's knowledge base we can talk about um yeah, the ticketing system to yeah. me is something that we'll like work toward as we learn more about our needs in these first mm -hmm. one or two steps. Yeah, so cool. so for, for me, for me, a first step would be that someone uh, kind of takes over the lead um, of, of this uh, support project, um, creates a proposal uh, just to, to get all the stakeholders on board if they want to comment and then uh, take it from there. Um, yeah. If, if, if it's not a technical person, just uh, get, get someone to help with setting up uh, the, the knowledge base system and so on. That, that would be... Yeah, like I, I, could, I could take the lead on that, but I am not a developer. I, I do need some help. Yeah, sure. That, that would be great, yeah. Um, I think it just needs first one who, who kind of pushes that. Uh, and yeah, I think um, for, for setting up this knowledge base, there, there should be also lots of developers that's not a kind of a hardcore uh, backend engineer that is necessary. It's it's more kind of following the setup guides and, oper yeah, setting up everything. But I think technical part uh, there will be uh, guys available, developers available to help out with that. So would you say ideally these would be separate proposals, one for the for the team or one the one people, or I don't know if that would require a proposal. Certainly one for the knowledge base. That should have a proposal. Yeah, on I think what the one for for the ticketing system, one for the knowledge base, 
then the the process it's a whole different discussion which in part depends on which tool was decided because it shapes the process if we want to do a process that is not supported we'll just screw it. so three proposals i think we could start writing a an overview document and have that circulate that's like the the master document about this project and then three sub documents yeah so sounds good i think uh, we do need proposals for that uh, as of course it, it should be it should be compensated in the end uh, on one hand side support agents should be able to be uh, compensated and also setting up this whole system and and for that as as not all stakeholders take take part in the growth calls it's, it's so much stuff going on in the bisc uh, mm -hmm. network and ecosystem already so i think it's 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 a good start to just have the proposals there um get it in front of the uh, stakeholders and so if someone has a problem with something they can point it out but yeah that will be the safe path to go so I guess for folks on this call, if you are interested in uh, what we've talked about and you think you might have something to offer, advice, uh, ideas on tools and uh, you know, ways to achieve a better support process for BISC, uh, maybe just join our support channel on Keybase and make your, your, uh, your contributions or ideas known and get involved with making these proposals. It'd probably be a good way to start if you're uh, if you would like to get started with this initiative. Yeah. By the way, this is a pretty big thing, so I don't think I can go at it alone. So if anybody wants to help, no, it's we... not going to be a one-person job by any means. This is by know, definition. But like checking out the document and starting out the the process. Yeah. The first draft. Yeah, so help with uh, drafting this proposal or any of the other proposals and um, approaches and ideas on how to do that are much appreciated. Join us in the support channel on Keybase to help out. And, and, and uh, just for information, um, uh, Fabio, your handle on Keybase is Fabio K, right? If someone wants exactly. to message you directly. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I did the unfortunate thing of putting Fabio K while on GitHub and everywhere else is F Kraus. So sorry about that. It's all good. We can we we can trust your identity on Keybase. So it's it's okay to be different on there. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Anything else folks would like anybody anything else you guys would like to add? Nothing special, but just uh, thanks to everyone who is has already joined the support channel and is helping out other uh, other BISC users. That's a, a big help, especially during this tight uh, transition phase um, from from the old to the new trade protocol. Cool. Uh, just just so just to sum up, uh, I'm going to create a, a channel on Keybase for for the support project. I'll just call it that. Or I think I can create a channel. Anyways, I'll create there a channel. There's already a support there. channel on Keybase. There is you a support have channel, one? but I think that's where that that's a, a support discussion. Oh, it's not a yeah, meta yeah, yeah. discussion about support. So okay. I'll create this channel or ask for help for creating it. And whoever wants to help with this, join the channel. Let's chat. I'll I'll put in a list of things we need to do as a team. And we, we go tackling those one by one. Great, sounds like a plan. I'll wait a couple more moments for anyone who has any anything else to add. Thanks again, Somebody's everybody, for your, your, your patience yeah. and uh, support over the past several weeks as we got through all this. All right, looks like that's about it. Thanks everybody for joining and We'll look forward to better support for BISC in the coming weeks. Take care. Awesome. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.